test. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this live worship at Trinity United Church in North Bay, October the 11th, 2020. We're live online, and we're also recording for YouTube. We're so lucky to have people with the talent to keep our services available for everybody, so that everybody, one way or another, can slow down and take stock and celebrate God's goodness with us. My name is Sue Miller, and I'm the co-chair of the CEO, Trinity's Christian Education and Outreach Committee. The Christian Education and Outreach Committee are responsible for Trinity Families, Mustard Seed Productions, Sunday School, Youth Group, Vacation Bible Camp, Women's Weekend, Spirit Point Family Day Weekend, and The Food Shelf. In-person Sunday school will be postponed until the new year so, th so that we can ensure safety during COVID. Many of our usual activities have been canceled or postponed, but that the CE committee is looking towards some innovative ways to connect with each other, including a possible virtual escape room and online game sessions. For our food bank, donations of money are always appreciated. We cannot accept clothes this year due to COVID. However, donations of new socks and blankets can be dropped off Mondays between 9.30 and 11. A reminder to everyone about our virtual apple pie, Trinity apple pies. They're flying off the shelves. Don't forget to watch the do-it-yourself Trinity apple pie tutorial on the Trinity's YouTube station. Most of us will have heard about Kinmount, the latest book from our Trinity resident author, Rod Carley. The famous Canadian humorist, Terry Fallis, calls Rod's Kinmount funny, thoughtful, compelling, 
and filled with humane insights about people and their passions. And he even compared it to the works of Robertson Davies. Kinmount is available to order from Indigo and Amazon and will be available at Alice and the Bookman and Kohl's after October the 17th, the day of Rod's online launch. Check out your Trinity newsletter to find out how to attend that book launch from the comfort of your own living room. Friends, I'm grateful to be worshiping with you today. Thank you for joining us. As always, we acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe people of the Nipissing First Nations, with whom we seek to live with mutuality and respect. Good morning, friends. Uh, some of you are meeting in person here in the Trinity Sanctuary. Many more of you will be meeting us uh, via YouTube. However you are joining us, we're glad you're here. And we love to share good news. Last week, we shared the names of some of, uh, some of this uh, last week's birthdays, but this upcoming week, we look forward to birthdays for Beverly Risk and Roberta, that's Bobby Fisher, and Anne Can. All of those amazing ladies are in their 10th decade and going strong. Also, um, this was news to me, Thursday, this, this upcoming Thursday, that's uh, October the 15th, is National Grouch Day. So once you're done being grateful on Thanksgiving, you can get really, you can get really grouchy later this week, and we'll all, we'll all celebrate that day, just how very complicated you are. And it's okay, you can be grouchy, and you can be thankful at the same time. Uh, you can this weekend, many of us are, because health authorities are telling us that we need to celebrate our Thanksgiving uh, only with the people that we live with uh, under the same roofs. And for many of us, that's, that's a lot to ask. Um, so today, I want to thank you for, for inviting me, for inviting uh, the, the whole Trinity United Church worship uh, into your bubble. Uh, I want to thank Sandy Haslam for bringing uh, some, some autumn splendor, some flavor of autumn splendor into our, into our worship space. And I'm... I'm very sorry to share the news that a beloved and cherished uh, leader of our congregation, Shirley Taylor, is palliative in the hospital after a, after a stroke uh, this past week. Shirley was, is a force of nature, and uh, she made the Trinity Pie Project happen, and uh, we are going to miss her more than words can say. Today we have, uh, we have images and music, we have story and prayer, we think about gratitude, and we think also uh, today about generosity. Thank you for being here. After uh, Trinity from our Sunday school calls us to worship, we're going to hear a Thanksgiving favorite hymn from the Trinity Choir. All that we have is a gift from God. All that we are is a gift from God. Every movement we make, every breath we take, this is life which we create as a gift from God. And so we gather to receive, to share, to give back, to be comforted, inspired, and strengthened. Let's worship God. Amen.
boy, it's hard to get in the, in the habit of not singing along with hymns. I caught myself there. At the beginning of our worship, we like to drop our pretenses and admit that we come before God and, and in the fullness of our humanity. This is called the prayer of confession, and there's a time of uh, a moment of silence in there uh, for your own confessions. Let us pray. Forgive me that I have not loved enough. Forgive me that I can love you and others no matter what their sins may be. Forgive me that I have not fully believed in the possibility and the power of forgiveness. Forgive me so that I can forgive, forgive others, and forgive myself. It is in God's nature to love and forgive. And God awakens those capacities in us. So be loved and be forgiven that you too might love and forgive. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now Lisa and some of our kids will share with us about how, about how God joins us at mealtime around the table. Hello, friends. This past week, I invited parents to interview their children about special meals. And folks, according to our Sunday school kids, it looks like we've been serving entirely the wrong food for our special meals all along. Take a listen. I want you to think about a very special meal, like the kind of special and amazing meal where you could invite anyone you wanted and you could eat anything you wanted. So I want you to imagine that right now. Who would you invite? I would invite my best friends and my family. Um, I'd invite my friend Lauren and my friend Carly, and I'd invite my family for my mom and my dad's side of the family. Family. <laughs> my Puerta. I would invite Lisa. I would invite my first friend, Evelyn, and my two parents. The people I would invite to have it would be, would be Mama, Gran, Pa, Bill Nye, and the Crap Brothers. I would invite Lisa. I would invite my family, my friends, and the church family. What kinds of special food would you have? We have some meat. Of course, best meat. This meat, this regular old meat. Um, hot dogs, hamburger, um, fruit, and fruit and vegetables. Chili, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, a lot of food. Rice, chicken nuggets, and pizza pockets. I would eat chicken noodle sandwiches. My most amazing meal would be pizza. Ribs. Spaghetti. We would have a buffet and chocolate fondue for dessert. <laughs> um, probably a turkey with my grandma's stuffing. So if Jesus were going to have a special meal, what do you think that would look like? Like who would he invite? Who would be seated at the table with Jesus? Me, my brother, that, my dad. And Amanda. And me. Mm -hmm. Me too. And he'd probably invite his disciples. I think he'd have his 12 disciples. God would be at Jesus' table. 
everybody? Um, so Jesus will invite everyone? That Jesus wants everyone to be invited to his meal. He'll probably invite um, the spirits of people who died and people who believe in God. What kind of food do you think Jesus would want to have? Jesus will have tomatoes, hot dogs, and um, carrots. Carrots. And and uh, and crackers and, and I think um salmon bread. With some jam. I think Jesus' special meal would probably be maybe like bread and wine. Um, he has bread and wine. Bread and wine mm -hmm. and some other stuff. Bread, juice, and apples. I think Jesus would like my dad's pasta. Some cookies. And his meal would probably look like tacos, pizza, and a movie night. And the table would look like everyone's favorite food. So as you gather this weekend, however you gather, whatever you eat, whoever sits at your table, I hope you gather with thanksgiving in your heart. And perhaps you would like to share one of these favorite graces that our Sunday school children share with you now. Oh, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank my, the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seeds. The Lord is good to me, Johnny Appleseed. Amen. God is good. God is great, God is good, let us and come for our food. Amen. And what's Grandpa's favorite blessing? Rabbanabda. Thanks for that, Grandpa. Yay, God. Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. Amen. How are you? How are you? Friends, as we gather this weekend for Thanksgiving, our tables might look a little smaller. It may be a little quieter. Maybe we'll be having something untraditional for dinner. But no matter how we gather, we gather as a people of faith and Thanksgiving. And we are reminded that we have so much to be thankful for, even in the time of COVID. So in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I invite you to say the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass. 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 And we was not in temptation. But Deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom. Oh, baby! Today's scripture reading from the New Testament is perfect for Thanksgiving because it's about abundance the abundance of what God offers us and the abundance that we all have to share. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians from the ninth chapter. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, 
you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, God, for you are our only rock. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to start today's sermon by, by telling you guys about my, uh, about my old cigarette habit, which started, believe it or not, when I was about four years old. You see, my father, well, my father was a very dutiful son uh, to my grandmother, who lived uh, alone in North Toronto. We lived in Scarborough, and uh, most every Saturday morning, we would go and visit my, my nana. It's, it's difficult to say, but I didn't particularly like my old Irish nana. Um, she wasn't what you would call a sweet or an affectionate person. She mostly chain-smoked Maurier cigarettes and complained about Catholicism. And I loved my grandmother, I, I still do. She, she died a couple decades ago now. I loved her and, and she loved me, of that I have no doubt, but we didn't particularly like each other very much. I, I know a lot of us have complicated relationships like that. However, when I complained to my father that I didn't want to visit my Nana every Saturday, he would respond to me, you'll do it and you'll like it. Anyone grow up with something like this? Yes, it's through gritted teeth, right? You'll do it and you'll like it. Not only was I required to spend time with my only grandparent, uh, but I was required to enjoy it. <clears throat> And there, there was at least one part that I did like. Once a week, my Nana would walk about a, two or three blocks from her house to the local donut shop, Mr. Donut, and buy a dozen jelly donuts. So when I visited her, I usually got to scarf down uh, a couple stale donuts. And what I remember so clearly is the taste of those donuts. Now, do you remember this? Everyone, including my grandmother, used to smoke in donut shops, right? There was a, there was a, a ratio, a consumption ratio of maybe half a dozen cigarettes to every donut. So consequently, the donuts tasted like someone had dumped cigarette butts into the batter as part of the baking process. Right? I, I don't eat very, very many donuts these days, but if I really wanted a taste that would bring me back. You'd only have to sprinkle my donut just a little from an ashtray, and that would fill me with a powerful nostalgia. I was a reluctant kid back then. I had to be told that I will visit my Nana and I will like it. But there is a lot that I truly miss. And you know, maybe Thanksgiving is a time to, uh, to look back and give thanks for some of the, um, the people and the, 
memories that we probably took for granted. Anyways, that expression, that expression, uh, you'll do it and you'll like it, that expression um, is an awful lot like an expression that Sue read to us uh, from the Scripture this morning. And the phrase is, God loves a cheerful giver, right? God loves a cheerful giver, which might as well be translated, you'll give and you'll like it, right? And that is exactly how we've used this passage uh, for generations. God, God loves a cheerful giver. Come on, give, will you? Give, 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 and be cheerful about it. If you're not cheerful about your giving, well, then you better feel really guilty, and you better give anyway. So give, 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 give more. And actually, we're pretty good at this. Let's see if these uh, guys uh, are able to move this. Look at this. Oh, I'm off the screen. <laughs> there I am. We are pretty good at this, plucking a word or a phrase out of the Bible and sort of twisting it to serve our own interests. But let me review with you how that phrase actually appears in the book of uh, uh, 2 Corinthians, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. St. Paul writes it like this. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So did you hear that? That's how God loves a cheerful giver. Don't give reluctantly. Don't give under compulsion. Don't give because somebody else is watching. Uh, don't give according to someone else's formula. Instead, search your heart and give what feels good and right and makes you happy. Because that's what will make you a cheerful giver. And God loves a cheerful giver. The implication is that if you are giving in a way that makes you feel used or, or bitter or resentful, then maybe, maybe just keep your gift because it's, it's, it's coming in altogether the wrong spirit. I, I have a particular... Um, perspective on this kind of giving because, because I work for the church. I work, I, I work for this church. And churches are sustained entirely by charitable giving, by voluntary donations. So you might think that I get to see how cheap and greedy people can be, but mostly it's the opposite. On a regular basis, I am astounded by people's generosity. Sometimes it is so humbling that it is that has literally reduced me to tears. Occasionally at Trinity, we we've stepped out to try new and creative things, right? And usually we don't really fully know where the money is going to come from. Uh, we decided we wanted to have a drama program for kids, and it's been going for well over a decade. Uh, when we saw an urgent need for an infant food bank in North Bay when we decided to stage a professional uh, grade production of Shakespeare. And then we said, hey, let's do it again. Um, whenever we wondered whether we, could, whether we could really do this thing, someone would come out with a checkbook or with a fundraising idea and say, hey, will, will this help? And if that's not a cheerful giver, then I, I, you know, I don't know what is. In recent years, of course, um, we've stumbled into some terrible capital expenses here at Trinity. Two years ago, we discovered that our, that our roof was so bad that, that, that our, the, this building could be condemned, stood to be condemned. And this summer, out of nowhere in July, a defective uh, interior ceiling spontaneously collapsed while we were closed. And what are we going to do? And... and in both those cases, we had donations from our congregation. We had donations from the Joy Band. We had donations from, from all over the city. We had significant donations from other churches. Uh, 
including St. Andrews and, and, and the pro-cathedral and the, and the Sons of Jacob uh, synagogue. We had donations from people who don't go to this church. We had donations from people who don't live in this city. Two, <laughs> two weeks ago, we received a third um, consecutive donation from, uh, from the local Odd Fellows, who said, uh, <laughs> who said, this was for the Infant Food Bank, but <laughs> we, uh, we doubled it because we heard about what happened to your ceiling. And this was definitely cheerful giving because he laughed when he handed over the envelope. <laughs> You want to talk about cheerful givers. Since we can't have our pie fundraiser right now, our single largest fundraiser of the year, um, since we can't have that f pie fundraiser, we laughed and we invited people to pay us anyways and make their own darn pie. It's hilarious because the, the checks are still rolling in. And that's just how people are giving monetarily. Uh, but season after season, year after year, uh, people give of their time and their passions. They give their leadership, their, their grit, uh, their musicality, their creativity, and they usually do it because, because they want to, right? Because it feels good and it feels right and it puts a bounce in their step. This is a great thing for us to talk about at Thanksgiving, isn't it? When you give out of a sense of resentfulness or compulsion, it makes you feel ripped off and mean. But when you give out of thankfulness, it feels great. Of course, this, uh, this isn't an ideal... That's, that isn't an ideal world, let's say. Sometimes our giving doesn't feel 100% rewarding, or it ends up costing more than we, than we initially intended, or there's pressure involved so that we're giving in a way that we don't feel perfectly good about. Or maybe sometimes it's only, it's only much later that we look back and we realize how, how good it was, how, how much of a privilege it was to be able to show up and give something of ourselves. And I have the perfect example. I can't tell you, I, I don't know how much I'd give, I, how much of a cheerful giver I would be if I could sit down one more time with my grandmother and a donut that tastes like an ashtray.
This is the time <clears throat> that we normally receive the offering. Today, thank, Thanksgiving is about thankfulness, of course, and, and we all know that thankfulness, that gratitude is a sustaining thing. When we are threatened by grief or depression, uh, keeping a gratitude journal or other gratefulness practices is part of uh, sustaining our resilience. Uh, people live longer and happier when we hold gratitude in our hearts. We are blessed, and our, and our very thanksgiving is a source of, of further blessing. During our COVID procedures, uh, your financial donations um, here can be made in the, in the baskets on the way in and out. Uh, many of us give via PAR, pre-authorized remittance. Some of us bring a check into the church office or give via the donate button on our website. However you support the church, thank you. Heaven knows how badly we need it right now. We pray that God will bless all the ways that we give. Bless these gifts and bless others through our service freely and joyfully given. In Jesus' name, amen. And now uh, we prepare our hearts for prayer with some help from the Sunday school singing, Lord, listen to your children praying. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to see uh, this week that Sandra Brownlee is part of it, showing us how to render the hymn in sign language. Not yet. That will be next week. <laughs> Lord, listen to our children praying. Today, it is a glorious day out there. Uh, autumn is a magical time when the waning of life and creation, uh, often, often it, it departs uh, in a blaze of glory. And autumn is a time of contemplation, which is what happens after months of addition we move into a time, a, a shoulder season of subtraction. We're mindful of creation in a new and different way, and, uh, and finally, um, Autumn is a time of harvest abundance when we gratefully prepare for, uh, for our winter hibernation. Please join me in a prayer that reflects on those realities. God of creation, we come to you in praise for the marvels of this world, for its intricacy of systems. We come and lament for the destruction of beauty, the thinning of plants and animals, for the heating and poisoning of land and water and air. We are in both praise and lament. May we share your joy and your grief in this. May we listen to and recognize the prophets of our present day that we may turn our hands and our giving to the work given to this generation. Open our hearts to these, the times in which we live. May we have courage that we can be grateful for what we have and change what needs changing. Open our hearts. 
to sorrow and to hope. Stir us to act as your presence in the world, to be faithful to this earth and to all our relations, to be a source of healing and humor and hope, to live in accord with you, with your making and with your great unquenchable thirst for life. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And our final hymn is another Thanksgiving staple. If, if, if hymns had a smell, today's hymns would smell like delicious turkey gravy. Thank you for being with us in worship today, whether it is in this space or virtually uh, with us or recorded on YouTube or DVD. We're just glad to celebrate Thanksgiving with you. When it's time to leave our physical space, our ushers will direct people out uh, from the back towards the front of the room. Thank you to those ushers, by the way. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you to all our many behind-the-scenes workers. Particular thanks to our digital team, to John Roberts, to Lisa Blade, to Marcel McDonald, to Michael Miller. Thank you to our greeters, to our lift operators, to our counters, to our lay leaders, Sue. Thank you uh, to Betty and to the Trinity Choir who have been faithfully recording for us for, lo, these many months. Remember Trinity's Dial for Hope uh, phone line ministry. For free, anyone can call 249-506-0377. At that number, you'll hear a free hopeful message recorded by different Trinity leaders uh, a couple times a week. Go out into the world, friends. We are, we, we are at a distance from one another, but that doesn't mean we can't be there for one another with carefully prepared food, with warm conversation over the phone with thoughtful gifts and prayers of love. Go out with a powerful sense of gratitude in your hearts and with an amazing sense of, of, of how much and in how many ways we, can, we, we are capable of giving. And cheerfully, for indeed God loves a cheerful giver. Go in good cheer and go in peace. Amen.